Hi guys, it's Mark from AnyPond.com, your trusted resource in the UK for ponds and water features. And today's question is how to calculate the size of a basin at the bottom of a pondless waterfall. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to work out the recommended size of water at the bottom of a waterfall. So the first thing to think about when sizing the, the reservoir for a pondless waterfall is how much water is actually in motion. As you can see on this particular waterfall, we've got a big basin. We've got a big waterfall at the back and there's lots of water in motion. And the way to calculate the size of water in motion is you work out the length of the stream, the width of the stream, and also the depth of the stream. So when you switch the pump on in the reservoir, how much water is actually in motion before it starts to run full bore back into the basin. And that's the calculation that we need to do. Is there pools that won't drain back into the reservoir? Because if it doesn't drain back into the reservoir, it's not water in motion. And the, the way to work that out is to do a 24 hour test. If you switch it off and there's a pool of water at the top and it's not flowing back into the reservoir, you don't need to consider that in the calculation. So let's go into the classroom and I'll draw that out for you. And we'll use that same example, three meters, by 60 centimetres by 15 centimetres deep and then we can work out the recommended size of the basin that we need to run that. So here's my makeshift classroom. How's that for a makeshift classroom? I've drawn this out. Instead of a chalkboard, I'll put it on a bit of cardboard. But hopefully this will help you understand the calculations of working out the size of a basin. What we've got here is we've got a crude drawing, so you'll have to excuse me, I'm a waterfall artist or an aquatic artist, not a, um, <laughs> I can't draw. But what we've got here is we've got some green representing the grass, we've got a basin, we've got a waterfall, and also we've got the calculations that I've written down so you can see it. So what we're basing it on is a three meter long waterfall that drops into the basin. We've got a 60 centimeter wide waterfall and we've got 15 centimeters of deep water that's falling back into the basin. So with that calculation, we can go three times 0.6 for 60 centimetres times 0.15 equaling 50 centimetres equals 0.27. And then we times it by 100 because that's how many litres are in a cubic metre. And that gives us 270 litres of falling water. So then what we can do is we can work out the size of the basin because we want two and a half times the water falling, the water in motion in the reservoir. That's recommended for evaporation. So what I've got here is we've got the calculation, 270 litres of falling water times 2.5 of the water in motion equals 675 litres of water to be held in the actual basin. Now, traditionally, before aqua blocks and pump bolts, we would have just dug a hole and filled it full of aggregate, but we've only got 35% space in between the gravel, in between the rocks. So using the aqua blocks and pump bolt, we can reduce the size of the hole down by at least three. A large aqua block holds 120 litres in the actual void. So it's 95% space compared to 35% space in rocks and gravel. Also with the pump bolt, it holds 100 litres without the extension. The extension is an additional 20 litres of water. So if you've got the pump bolt and extension for the large aqua blocks, you're looking at 120 litres. So if we divide 675 by 120 litres, it comes out at 5.625. So what I would actually recommend is five aqua blocks and a pump bolt. Yes, it's six times, and yes, we're going to have more water in the basin, but I would rather go bigger than smaller because a bigger reservoir with the amount of water underneath you'll get less evaporation, you will have less um, topping up, so restoring the water in the reservoir, it'll be a lot less hassle. And this is where a lot of traditional water features in garden centres and other retail outlets fall short, is the basin is miles too small, and sometimes you need to top them up on a daily basis. So a lot of people get disheartened and they think, oh, water features are a nightmare. But when you work on the calculation of two and a half times the water in motion, allowing for a little bit of, of evaporation, 
as long as you've got no low edges and it's not splashing out so all of the water's going back in, you'll be perfectly fine. So my name is Mark, the Pond Advisor, and I'm here to support you, dream, plan and enjoy ponds and water features and hopefully you've uh, forgiven me for my terrible drawing but hopefully it's inspired you to work out the calculations on pondless waterfalls. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.